Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. I know it's been a while, but we're finally going to be talking about Clancy. But before we talk about Clancy, we're going to go listen to Paladin Straight. So there looks to be a difference between the Tyler singing and the battle Tyler. So one of these must be Clancy. I mean, maybe they're both Clancy, one of them's like reflecting, the other one's like currently like doing the battle. I will say this is a cool shot though. I don't know if this is gonna show up later, but it would be really sick if we saw some like suicide scars. A slit neck or like slit wrists. Or it's like something that's like very obviously, oh you did this to yourself. Because that's who these people are. They are the glorious gone who were buried with neon gravestones. Because in Vialism, if you kill yourself, you are glorious gone. And you're buried with a neon gravestone. <laughs> these neon gravestones mean so much. And they're just like some of the darkest parts of Train of Pilots. And they're so cool. Like, it's like the concept of them is really cool, but they're so dark. And they're taking apart the neon gravestones to fight with. Oh, oh what's that approach? Gosh, that's such a scary approach. That's reminiscent of jumpsuit right there. So few, so proud, so emotional. Hello, Clancy. What are you doing? What? <laughs> all that, all that for nothing. I thought this would be the solution to the problem. I thought that what was going to happen just now was we were going to know everything and everything all at once. That's fantastic, amazing. So, <laughs> uh, we we know nothing more about the final battle or the uh, finale to it. Uh, <laughs> great! I waited all this time for nothing. Uh, it's probably re revealed during the shows, which I'll probably do like a brief review of because I've got like the third show that they're going to be doing <laughs> that I got the tickets for. I, I really didn't learn that much more information from that. It was just more like, yeah, there's a final battle, yeah, there's bandidos, yeah, we see they're like meeting back together, but not anything that special really. Except for the fact that Tyler just dipped and let the others fight. <laughs> that's cool, that's very fun. Uh, let us... Alright, let's go do the <laughs> review for Clancy. So first of all, you got the uh, Bandito sample, which adds a lot more weight to Bandito itself, which is pretty sick. You got some white boy rapping. The production on the whole thing is pretty stellar, I would say. The lyrics are pretty alright. The instrumental is pretty nice. I don't think it's better than Ride, but I do agree it's pretty solidly S tier. Just because it is a pretty decent song. I just sometimes Ride hits a bit harder, and like the rap verse in Ride is a lot better than the rapping in Overcompensate. Like, I die for you, that's easy to say. We have a list of people that would take a bullet for them, a bullet for you, a bullet for everybody in this room. That goes hard. <laughs> And Over Conversate doesn't really have that h many hard-hitting lyrics. I think it is solidly S plus tier. The lyrics are amazing. I love the punk vibes to it. I love I love the dynamics as well with it. Like how it goes like with the chorus is just so different from the punk vibes. Like, that's just really cool to me. I think it's just like a really good song with really good lyrics. This is probably the highlight of Classy for me. It's grown to me a lot. I think I'm gonna have to move it up because it is really good. Better than Saturday for sure. I think it's better than House of Gold. No, I think it's better than Ride, but not better than House of Gold. Kind of catchy. The chorus does has grown on me, but it's still not like the most punchy. But it's still pretty good. Uh, the lyrics are really good all the way through. The instrumental solid. That just goes hard when the beat kicks in. It's really nice. This is the first of the non-singles. It's grinding me a bit. Got some good lyrics. The instrumental's pretty good. I, I also quite like the dynamics. These songs have just grown on me a bit. Yeah, it's just like a solid, like happy little song. I think it's A+. Plus. Yeah, this song goes hard. It, it's so good. <laughs> uh, Routines of the Night, it's got a really 
a more self-titled feel, I guess. Like, it's a lot more laid back, it's somewhat reminiscent of Chlorine, which is why I put them next to each other. The lyrics aren't, like, super deep, I don't think, but they're, they're good. I like what Tyler's voice is doing, I like the instrumental. It's just really groovy, I guess, and catchy, and it just works really well. It was S tier. I mean, I knew it was coming, but having seen the uh, uh, the, the music video for Pan and Straight now, it's insane that he predicted uh, that. So like, uh, the tribute to zombies, Th the glorious gone are zombies now. <laughs> so that's just like a, a little preview of like the battle, I guess, which is just kind of sick. Yeah, the song goes hard as well. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it's better than Routines in the Night. Actually, no, I don't think it, I don't think it is. Um, I really like this though. I really like all these songs here. But in the semi automatic there. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep it like that. I'll have Chlorine be the separator there, because they're both like really good songs. I just feel like Chlorine's like I love the dynamics in Vignette, but also if you just like the feeling of Chlorine is just so good, like and like the vibe of it, that I think it just edges out Vignette by like a tiny bit. But like it's better than Love of Concern, it's better than Stressed Out, like <laughs> the song's grown on me hard. Say enough, say enough, did I let her know, let her know if I found my body in chains, I'd lay down in wait. The single version is still better, but like this one has more motion, but I do like the production on the single version a bit more. This version has a lot more motion than the single version, just by the nature of it being acoustic, like you can feel the emotions more. I just don't find it as good as a song. It is like a not much needed break for the intensity of the uh, album so far, but I don't know. The show let it flow, shine. This song has grown on me, but I'm not gonna move it up because I was already being really generous when I put it in B. Uh, it's grown on me. It's kind of catchy. It's kind of like interesting feel, but it's it's not the best. Like, it doesn't have, like, super strong lyrics. The instrumental is interesting, but not, like, amazing. The vocals are in interesting, but not good. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it's gonna get higher than B. I might move it down. I it's better than Choker, at least. Yeah, I'm sorry, Lavish fans. It's just not the best. <laughs> Fun fact, Tyler just posted this on his Twitter. Oh, navigating this song fucks it's so good so this song works in the context of Dima and in mental health as well finally coming late to this thing uh, I my brain is fucked and I need to like navigate through it I need to disassociate and like work on my brain I was like the lyrics of that work really well I love the dynamics I love the chorus I love the vocals the drum tracks really good Josh Dunn thank you for saving the song and putting it on the album it's so good I think it's S plus I think yeah I think that's a pretty solid place to put it though because uh, it is good Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's not the worst thing in the world. I don't even put it. <laughs> I can't even find snapback. Oh, there it is. Uh, yeah, it's not the worst thing in the world, I'd say, but it is, it's not that good. It reminds me of a Grandson song, but like in a bad way. Because Grandson has some bangers, but this does not remind me of that. It's just, um, I think Anthony Pantano said it best, because it's just repeating the themes of Backslide, but worse. <laughs> Yeah, I... I don't know, I don't feel like it's A tier. Um, I feel like it's better than Leave the City. I, I feel like the, the locations are good, it's just not A tier. I think I like the craving a little bit more, honestly. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna move it down to uh, the lowest of A tier, just because I just think the other songs are stronger, are stronger, and I don't feel like Snapback is truly an A tier song. It's just, it's decent. It's got some lyrics, it's got some vocals. <laughs> This one's kind of sweet. It's grown on me, but also like the other songs are grown on me, so we're gonna move it a little above blasphemy. Uh, the lyrics are pretty good. The uh, instrumental and the vocals are like, simple, but they work really well for what they're trying to do. And like the overall vibe of the song, like it, it, this is ex exactly what it wants to be. It, it knows what it's trying to be, and it is. But I don't know. All in all, it could be better. Not that it could be better. But, like they know, they did what they're trying to do. 
Um, it's just I don't think what they were trying to do is like an S plus song. <laughs> like they made a solid song, A tier. This song's so good. It's grown on me so much. I love the dynamics. I love the building. I love the lyrics of this. I love the vocals. I love the instrumental. There's so many really good things I love about it. It's got like that solid emotional core. Yeah, it's just S plus. <laughs> it's, it's really good. I I know I put them in the same tier as like these guys, but I think everything up to trees is like a league of their own. We're putting a, a special tier. Like there is such a huge difference between these guys and the other ones in S Plus that like, it deserves its own tier. These are peak songs. Like they're just so good. And I, I just had to separate that up because <laughs> Navigating is nowhere near as good as Car Radio. Like it, it's a lot closer to like Mulberry Street than it is to Car Radio, you know? <laughs> I would swim the Paladin straight without any flotation. We just heard this one. I don't know, it's growing on me. It's better than uh, all of these guys. I'd say, there. Yeah. Solid A tier. The instrumental's pretty nice. Like, it's simple, but it works. The the vocals also work. The lyrics, like, all the metaphors and that, that works really well. Um, I think I'd knock it a couple points just for having the super long outro. It and the city work w well together. Like, they're both closers of, like, super lore heavy albums. Well, this one's not really super lore heavy, but, you know, like, very trench esque albums. But yeah, sweet lyrics, sweet vocals, just an all around sweet song. That's my tier list of uh, Turner Pilots finalized. Go down slowly so that anyone who wants to can uh, read all these. <laughs> Time to talk about Clancy itself. Now, I think, all in all, as an overall album, it could be better. <laughs> it, it could be better. It's not their best. It's pretty solid. I will say that. It's a pretty solid album. It's better than Scale and Icy, which is, needs to be said, but it's true. As like a Turner Pilots album, it kind of works. It fits in, into the discography very well. Like, it, it does, like, at this point feel like it's always been there. It works with, like, a lot of the themes and stuff that uh, the pilots have been going through. I just don't think it's their best. <laughs> like, first of all, as an overall album structure, I don't- it doesn't have that strong of a premise. Like, Trench, you have the whole concert album. In Vessel, you have, like, the whole, like, journey of mental health and, like, healing and recovery and the, the, the song's lyrics and tones reflect that. Uh, in Blurryface you have like the battle with Blurryface that's going on and even though it's, it starts super intense and ends super chill, it, it works really well and like Gone and Hometown are such excellent closers. And Skeleton and Icy you kind of have, you have the theme of like the whole propaganda and everything else going on with that. Clancy doesn't really have any of that. It was promised to be this big insane lore album. Like yeah there's a few elements here and there but it's not really there on the same scale as Trench was. Um, and, and what little we do get is so muddled and confusing. Um, like, yeah, you can read into, like, exact lyrics and, like, choosing this word over another to mean something. But, I don't know. Uh, I like the storytelling on Trench better. <laughs> the f overall feel of the whole album doesn't really work. Like, it's, it's not that cohesive. Like, it's just a lot of really different ideas being shoved at you. Like, Vessel, it sounds like Vessel. Trench, it sounds like Trench. They all have their distinct sounds. And Clancy's just like, mm, rap. One rap song. One punk song. You got a lot of, like, like, backslide and snap back. Like, that's, I don't know what to call that, but I guess that's kind of, like, the general tone of Clancy, all in all. But, <laughs> I, I, the tone of Clancy isn't that, like, cohesive is what I'm trying to get at here. Because you have, like, the super strong songs with, like, Navigating, uh, Overcompensate, Next Semester, like, they're all super strong, but they're deviating from the to tone of the album. And, like, the best songs are the ones that are, like, different, somewhat experimental. Unlike Lavish. But when they go, like, more energetic, instead of the Got, got a bad feeling, I'm about to... That's one second closer. But you know what I mean? Like, that's snapback, kind of. <laughs> and, like, when they go and deviate from, like, that snapback norm, Clancy's good. Uh, something else I've seen, like, in terms of, like, lore and stuff is... There's been a lot of, like, mentions of loops and stuff in Clancy, and, like, the idea that the whole story is going to end with Tyler, like, uh, waking back up in Heavy Dirty Soul Car, and, because, like, that music video was just a bunch of loops. There's been a bunch of mentions of loops in the whole album so far, and, like, a lot of throwbacks to old videos. Like, the heck, in the Pattern of Shape video that we just watched, you literally have the part where Nico is holding up Clancy like this, which is a massive throwback to Jumpsuit. Uh, you have, like, Obviously, like, the stuff on your hands, the neck, that's just, like, the, the character that Tyler plays, but that's, like, references to old, older material, 
and so, like that's in an interesting place to take the lore, but it could have been expanded on stronger. <laughs> I can't think really of what else I could say about uh, Clancy, but if I do, I'll just chuck it in later. Uh, let's say overall albums scores, because I'm wrapping up everything. Uh, let's start over here. We're going to put in a uh, subtitle. I'd say it's like a 5 out of 10 album, <laughs> uh, just because like there's a lot of really strong ideas, there's a lot of really cool synth parts, the vocals aren't there, um, the, the lyrics are kind of there, like they're super vague and obscure, but not in like the, uh, the good way that <laughs> they became later. Um, but yeah, you got some super strong so songs in there, like Air Catcher, Trap Door, and Friend Please as well. Uh, Pantaloon. But you've also got some mid ones. <laughs> like, uh, not even mid, just like, you got some of the most boring songs of the catalogue, in my opinion. Yeah, I misbelieve in uh, Before You Start Your Day, that's some of my least favorite 25 songs, period, because it's boring to me. Um, so like, you got some strong ones, not like peak strong ones, but like some strong ones and stuff titled, and a lot of the weakest ones. So, like, four, 5 out of 10, kinda? Maybe like a strong 4? <laughs> Uh, no fun intended. It's not on Spotify, but I can it anyway. I think it's got like two bangers, two or three bangers on it, and then everything else is also just kind of mid. Um, so I, I'd say it's like a 4.6 out of 10. <laughs> like it's slightly better than self-titled, just because there's less really boring songs. And even TV Saga, which I hate with a passion, at least it makes me feel something. Song that I hate with a passion is better than a boring song. I'll, <laughs> I'll say that. I'll say it lightly. Um... So yeah, I, I feel like uh, No Fun Intended is like a 4.6 4 out of 10. Um, then we've got Regional Best. Regional Best, 9 out of 10. <laughs> um, 9 points. I'll say 9. I should not have done decimal, decimal points. We're going to go back. This, this is a decent <laughs> decent 4 out of 10, and then also a decent 4 out of 10. And we're not going to do decimal points. Regional Best is a strong 9 out of 10. It's really good. It's got some of their best songs, like Forest, uh, Kitchen Sink. Even like the Vessel demos were like the best songs on Vessel. Like Car Radio, Guns for Hands, Holding On To You, uh, Trees. They were some of the best songs on Vessel, even though the regional Vest versions are pretty much unanimously inferior. They still exist. Uh, some of the other songs that on regional Vest that didn't get over, like Ruby or Glowing Eyes, they're still pretty solid. Um, but yeah, like Forest Kitchen Sink are some of the best Twin Pilot songs ever made, and Forest especially is one of my favorite songs ever. So is Car Radio, but the Vessel version. So. Uh, re regional best, 9 out of 10. <laughs> Strong 9. Then we go on to Vessel, which is a 10 out of 10 album. <laughs> Vessel is my favorite album of all time. It's got, uh, Car Radio, my favorite song of all time. Gods of the Hands, like, top 5 favorite songs of all time. It's got a really strong, like, message to it with, like, overcoming and dealing with mental health and all those aspects. It's got a really interesting sound to it with, like, all these interesting, like, synths and different like rock elements uh, shoved in there it's got some amazing lyrics throughout the whole thing it's got great dynamics it's it's really really good <laughs> i love a vessel with a passion it's so good if you want to see more about vessel i did a video all about it blow face is next blow face um i don't know six out of ten it's like it's a decent six because it feels messy in places and it's uh even despite having like lane boy message man stress out ride Gone our hometown, bunch of strong songs. The overall album doesn't feel that cohesive, <laughs> like not as much as Fancy does, but it there is a lot of not that cohesiveness in it. Um, like yeah, there is like the sound, but not all the songs work together like in full album context. The concept of the album is pretty nice though. Uh, like the battle with Blurryface and all that stuff. Like I think this is where Tyler like started to develop the Trench and Dima storyline. But he wasn't that good at writing lyrics that apply to, like, everything. <laughs> so they're just, like, super vague. They mean stuff, but at the same time, they're sort of meaningless. Because, <laughs> like, yeah, there's some lyrics you can point to, like, Oh, sorry, law, law, law. Like, message ban. But there's also, like, some, some stuff was like, I don't know what the crap you're talking about. Like, with, with Judge, even Genius is like, The Judge has four different meanings. Pick one. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, it's, just, it's just decent 6 out of 10, but it's still 6. Trench is a strong 9 out of 10 as well. I think, yes, yeah, strong 9 out of 10, but regional best is better. <laughs> because I love the concept of it. Uh, pretty much all the songs are bangers. There's a lot of emotion and just like a lot more important topics are being talked about. Like with Neon Gravestones, it kind of feels like Guns for Hands Part 2. Because uh, Blurryface didn't really have any songs like Guns for Hands. Like there wasn't any just like Stop Killing Yourself songs. <laughs> Which I don't know if it's Twin Pilots Brand, but it feels like it is. And. Yeah, Neon Gravestones and God for Hands are, like, 
They're not, they're not siblings, they're cousins, <laughs> but it is important to have a song like that. The, the whole concept, like I said, of Trench is amazing, so many bangers on it. Even like Brad Taste of Music, who's not the biggest fan of Trump Pilots in, in general, he pulled up Trench as like, hey, you could hear the emotion in his voice, he sounds like he's about to cry. And I love when you can feel the emotion just in the vocals, it's so powerful and I love it. So yeah, Trench, strong 9 out of 10, it's really good in like every single aspect. Uh, and then we have Scared and Icy, which I guess I'll put up here. <laughs> it is an album that fans think is bad on purpose. I'm gonna elaborate, but like that's the general gist. If the fans of the album think it's supposed to be bad, that is like, even if it is, that just sounds like they're coping. <laughs> it, it sounds like they're just begging, like, please don't have the beat releasing this genuinely. It's got some good songs on it. I will say, it's got some good sounds. The overall direction I'm not the biggest fan of because it really deviates from the Toy on Pilots norm. But, like, it's got some baggers in there. Redecorate, for one, is super good, but eh. <laughs> No Chance is also really good. Like, when they lean hard into the propaganda angle, like they did with No Chances, where it's literally a battle in the song itself between the Bishops and Clancy, oh, that's when it peaked. They just needed to lean harder into that aspect, and then it would have been better, but they really didn't. It also, like, somewhat deals with COVID, but not the best. <laughs> I'm gonna give Scale and Icy, like, a light 6 out of 10. I'm not gonna rank the singles, because that would just fill up way too much of the screen. Then we have Clancy up here. Better than Blowface. I so... I think it's strong 6. <laughs> like, once again, Brad Taste of Music said it best. It's not Trench 2.0, it's Blowface 2.0. And I was hoping for Trench 2.0, but Blowface 2.0 is fine. Overall album as a concept doesn't... Like, it, it's, it flows even worse than Blowface does. Uh, even despite the fact that, like, I put three of the songs there in S+, and, like, I, I ranked, like, the individual songs, like, pretty high for the most of it, the the way that it flows as an album just really drags it down. Because, like, if you think about, like, Gorilla's Song Machine, where all those songs are supposed to be singles, they were designed to be singles from the get-go, and they were. So even though the fact that it doesn't, like, have a concept of the album or the songs, like, transition to, into each other, it still flows nicely, like, it's, like... It, it doesn't change genres every like two seconds on your ears, you know? And despite the fact that uh, in Lane Boy, Tyler's like, if we had it our way, we'd have a tempo change every other time frame. That doesn't really work in Clancy. Like, I do like it, them experimenting with different sounds and uh, stuff to it. It's just the main sound of the album being that like snapback, uh, oldie station, Midwest Indigo kind of vibe, but like uh, more chill. Doesn't really work for me that strongly. If we go back to my tier list, I've ranked Pretty much all the songs that I've had in these are ones where they're like uh, super good in like an aspect or like they're more energetic. So like for example, Car Radio, it's got that amazing drop and synth solo. Guns for Hands, it's got the amazing rap and synth all the way through. Forest, do I have you say anything? And Neon Gravestone's the lyrics, that's really the reason. Uh, Kitchen Sink, it, you know. Uh, Trees, it's got that amazing synth solo. And then you go down here and I'm like, oh, the boring selection. <laughs> so like I like the more energetic songs and I don't like what like the direction that the majority of the album of Clancy went into. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching that video. If you'd like to watch the entire series in order, you can click over here. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, you can click on my face. And if you would like to see the full vod of me reacting to the Paladin straight recording this and editing it, click over here. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Stay safe, stay alive. Yeah.